Sunny 104.5, today's best mix. Tonight, a huge night, especially for Wilmington, because Sleepy Hollow begins and Under the Dome ends. Can I sniffle just a couple more times when I say Under the Dome ends? But just for a little bit, because Under the Dome will be back, yes indeed. And uh, to talk about tonight's episode and what the heck's been going on while they've been on hiatus, I've got one of my favorite characters, my favorite people in the world, Jolene Purdy. She plays the character Dodie and Under the Dome. Good morning, my love. <laughs> Good morning. Girl, <laughs> last week... I shed a tear. Oh. And let me tell you, I, I am sure millions of people shed a tear because you have got to be a lot of people's favorite character on that show. Oh, it was really, really fun. And I actually, I loved doing that scene. It was the most fun I had on the show. <laughs> Dying. We have some questions that came from Twitter. Like John Allen on Twitter said, what was the funniest moment during production? And is there any chance of coming back to haunt Big Jim? I have no idea. I would love to come back to Wilmington. And even if I don't come back to the show, I may come back and visit just because I loved it so much. The funniest part of the show, you know, I just got the blooper reel that's going to be released on the DVD, and it's hilarious for a drama. We had a lot of fun. Right? I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of funny things. Nicholas and I always played around. We would, um, he plays guitar, and so we would, like, have jam sessions in between days. And and we all know you sing Beyond a Bird. You're, uh, you know, and I didn't know, you were on Glee. I was, How yeah. did I not know you were on Glee? Well, you know, I didn't sing on Glee. I just, I, you know, I had to go through the whole process of singing, and they ended up not using me. But I got to be skanky on Glee. It was fun. <laughs> I got to be skanky. Now, how, yeah. after hearing your voice, did they say, no, she's not singing on Glee? I've heard you just play around, and you can't just play around the way you play play around without being obnoxiously great singer. Well, I like to karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> and I started in musical theater. But, you know, that show, there's so many characters and so many ways that the writers can go they just never know, and, you know, they didn't go that way, so. Right. It's all good. And going back to uh, to Phil Bushy, a.k.a. Nicholas Strong, uh, you were saying that you might come back to visit. Uh, your relationship with, with him, of course, y'all are really tight on the show, but you're really tight in real life, too, huh? Yeah, me and Nicholas and Alex were kind of the three musketeers in Wilmington. The ramblers. <laughs> and in L.A., the first thing we did, like, when we all got back, was got together and had some lunch and hung out in L.A., beautiful L.A. with the sunshine and the cool breezes. It's great to see that because, I mean, you truly are. Your whole cast gets along so well. I mean, you really change the way casts are. I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, we're a family. But sincerely, I've never seen anybody um, love each other so much like you do and your cast members do on Under the Dome. I know. That's kind of why I'm sad that I left, mostly because I do love the cast. So much. Everyone's amazing, and it was such a blessing to get to work with them. So let me ask you this. When did you know you were going to get killed off? Did you know, like, Mm -hmm. soon or just right before they started shooting? Uh, Well, the writers and producers called me shortly after the premiere and let me know that within an episode or two, I would be uh, having a great monologue death scene. (laughs) So... It was something to look forward to, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Now, we have a question from Solo Talk Media, and I actually had the same thoughts when I saw this episode. They said, I'd like to know if those were real or fake tears during her last scene, and if it's real, what did she do to cry on cue? They were real tears, and I don't even remember that day because it was like crazy, crazy things happening, like squibs going off and pyro and and fire and my last scene and Dean holding a gun at me like it was a crazy day so it surprised me that there were tears actually because I don't remember um I remember crying and I did various different levels of not crying crying smiling like I did a bunch of different takes right Yeah, they must have loved that because the camera didn't leave your face. You can literally, I mean, there was no CG here. You literally welled up on your own. You know, they kept that camera on you. And I'm like, oh, my God. And it made me so sad because I know you. (laughs) I'm like, 
no, no, my baby. My baby, Julie, don't cry. Well, it's not the first time Dean has made me cry. All right. So oh. I really have to give him the credit, I think, because he does a really good job making me cry. There you go. I love it. Um, Holly Sarah wants to know, I'm curious where she learned the sign language, if it was just for the show or something else. I learned the alphabet, I think, in middle school, um, but they hired a coach to help me um, learn a little bit of sign language, and it was awesome, and I wish I could, like, learn more. I thought they were going to have me do more sign language, but that didn't happen. Jolis says, is it possible that the Dome could bring back Dodie to life, some kind of retribution of uh, to life? That would be amazing if I could come back to Wilmington, <laughs> go to the Blue Post. Oh, yeah, the Ramblers <laughs> hang out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Megan Lomania wants to know, was it motivating to make her awesome because of how bad <laughs> she has it in the book? Yeah, in the book, she died so early on, and when I was on my flight coming over to Wilmington, my manager had said, pack for six months, that's how long it's going to be. And reading the book, I was like, uh, it might be six weeks. She kind of dies like 60 pages in. I wasn't sure because she was like a crazy, like, druggy. She wasn't so smart. Right. You know, so changing her up and giving, you know, the creators different levels of what they wanted to do with Dodie was really fun, actually. Yeah, I, I'm glad, too, because I, I liked that quirky um, MacGyver side. Remember, we talked about this earlier months ago about, you know, you being the MacGyver at the radio station. So Yeah, she just takes all of her tech stuff. Nothing is broken. It just needs to be fixed. That's right. And turned into something wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's going to be huge. I mean, you know, you know what's going to be happening at Hell's Kitchen. Like I said, you know that place is going to be packed. Oh, yeah. I got to ask you, not that you can give that much away, but hey, I mean, you got killed off. So, you know, it's <laughs> if you don't have a new contract for season two, I say you should spill the beans. Well, that wouldn't be fun. You guys <laughs> just sat through 12 episodes. And if I spoiled it right before, <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> All right. Um, what kind of tease questions can... that are going to be answered? Oh, that's the generic answer. Come on, Jolene. Give us something but not, more. But not in your traditional sense. They're not going to dumb it down for the audience. It's, it's symbolic. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Well, that's Stephen King for you, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got to go. I know you got stuff to do. So just a couple more lifestyle questions for you. What you been doing since you've been gone? I went on a honeymoon with my husband. Oh. Yeah, we went to Europe. We spent three weeks. Um, it was so much fun. I almost fell out of a gondola in Venice. <laughs> yeah. I saw this, like, fluorescent bubonic plague water before my eyes, and I threw myself back into the gondola. <laughs> um, we went to Spain, Italy. Oh. It was a lot of fun. Oh, that's fantastic. I heard Nicholas is out of the country, too. He is, yeah. You guys just, when you get out of Dodge, you really get out of Dodge, don't you? <laughs> Well, you know, I miss being home, and I wanted to spend some time, and I've been spending a lot of time with my family, and back to the grind of auditioning. And, yep. yep. That's my next question. What's next for Jolene Purdy? Well, comedy. Yes. Definitely and after this season of Tears. Right. Let's, let's I'm, do some comedy. I'm so glad you said that, because the one thing that Dodie doesn't have, which is I miss because I know you on a personal level, that energetic, funny, lighthearted, because everything's so heavy on poor Dodie, you know? I know. So I miss that side of you, and that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping you can get into some comedy and, of course, singing. But, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that the whole world sees that wonderful, playful side that you have. Yeah. I would love to do some more uh, comedy. So there's some stuff that I'm looking at, and hopefully it all works out. I hope so, too. You are such a wonderful superstar, and what I love about you is you're so down-to-earth. You're so approachable. You talk to everybody. You're not a diva, and you're just <laughs> the cutest thing in the world. Just Every time I see you, my heart just jumps because you're just such a wonderful person to be around. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I didn't forget what you said in June, that you might be looking at property here, so I'm going to hold you to it <laughs> because your husband loves it here. So I don't think this will be the last time we hear from you, right? Right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>